Today, we're gonna take a look at one of the best instant cameras of the modern era, the Lomo Instant Square. Even Polaroid loyalists who live and die by the sword of Dr. Edwin H. Land admit this relatively new camera with its glass lens can produce some of the sharpest images since the SLR 690. So I'm gonna go over there and talk about it. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben and today's instant review is the Lomo Instant Square Glass. This tiny work of art could literally just sit on my shelf and be worth the price. I mean, this thing's got it all. I've maybe never been more attracted to a camera and I'm usually more of a humans guy, like usually. Not to mention it unfolds to a clicking stop. That's just something about that is sort of weirdly satisfying to me and it's causing problems in my personal life. Uh, this camera takes Instax Square film, which only debuted in 2018 and is thus one of only four cameras compatible with the format. Take a look at the difference between Instax Square, Instax Mini, and a Polaroid. It's the same height as the Mini, but it's wider, obviously, and not really close to the scale of the Polaroid. But even so, this format is an expansion of Fuji's popular film stock, and if you want the classic square instant film look without shelling for the price of a Polaroid Originals film, this is a happy medium. So, as for the camera, the aforementioned glass lens allows you to capture some very sharp images, and that combined with Fuji's color science and detail can produce pictures really not possible since the SX70 and SLR680 on original Polaroid film. Let's take a look at some of these images. Might be slightly hard to tell on video, so I'm gonna blow a few of these up here. I am consistently blown away by the results. The quality doesn't even really look like instant film. It looks like, almost like something you could get out of a point and shoot camera. So obviously I love what it can do, but getting to this point is actually quite difficult thanks to the, um, the f***ing viewfinder. The viewfinder is really far away from the lens, especially because it extends outward from away from it. I hate to say this, but this is definitely the most challenging camera I've ever used in terms of framing shots. It takes a lot of time to get used to the parallax created by this separation. The viewfinder is also very small and has sort of a grayed out box inside that uh, kind of helps with framing. The closer you are, the closer you want to frame down and to the right. But again, that takes time to get used to. And once you do get used to it, there's some cute stuff going on in here. So let's take a look. On the back, you've got your flash override, you've got multiple exposure mode, you've got exposure compensation, you've got automatic exposure or bulb mode for long exposures, and the 10 second timer. Once again, Lomo hits us with some spy level gadgetry by low key hiding a remote inside the camera, which slides out and can also trigger a 10 second timer or just the shutter. When I bring this camera around, that seems to be the thing that blows people's pants like way off, and which is kind of problematic now. But it has interchangeable film backs so you can use Instax minis with it, which is absolutely genius. Um, it's just fun. This is fun. This is a fun camera and I'm having a good time talking about it. In the world of tricked out design elements, the Lomo logo is the friggin' shutter button, which is just, you know, I mean, these guys, they're just good at this. They're good at doing this. There's a slot above the flash through which you can slide little colored plastic gel thingies. You've got your selfie mirror, though good luck aligning anything with that in focus. Um, speaking of focus, this is the other challenge. Something that's kind of awesome about the lens is that it's a 45 millimeter equivalent, which is similar to the SX70. And so many modern instant cameras have wider focal lengths and field of view. So that makes this a fantastic portrait lens. If you can get it in focus. The zone focusing system, which resets every time you open the lens, has options for 0.8 meters, one to 2.5 and infinity. I may be spatially incompetent, but I find that kind of hard to eyeball when I'm trying to take a shot quickly. Getting wide shot sharp is easy, but once you're in that portrait zone, the difference between two feet and three feet is the difference between getting something in focus and getting something that is a fresh, hot piece of straight up trash. Kind of tough and tougher because it has that longer, less forgiving focal length. So I guess it's uh, pros and cons time. Pros, incredibly sharp images. 
robust features. It has everything you'd want and more. Design, did I mention this thing looks like a treat and I have like weird feelings for it? Cons, uh, the viewfinder makes framing difficult. The zone focusing system makes hitting focus tough. A 45 millimeter lens like this almost demands an SLR viewfinder where I can actually see what I'm shooting. And cost, Lomo sells this for $150 on their website, but on eBay you can get them for as cheap as $50, so definitely do some sleuthing. Even if you can't get it for that cheap, it's worth buying through Lomography to provide love and support to the hardworking individuals who created such a beautiful object that is doing something to me psychologically, which I can't explain, but um, anyway. Thanks for watching. In an instant, go ahead and drive your car through that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more reviews, breakdowns, and all things instant. Bye.